This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Thursday, the 30th day of September in the year 2021. I'm Gordon Mosley, and here's what we're tracking tonight. 19 year old electrician Joshua Denny was shot dead by robbers early this morning while he was on his way to work, leaving his family members shattered and the community in disbelief. <laughs> A police report said the incident occurred just after 7 o'clock this morning, moments after the young man left his festival city, North Ranville, home for work. His sister Felicia Denny said she was alerted to the shooting by persons in the street moments after her brother told them that he was heading out to work. When she rushed out to the scene, she found her brother lying motionless with a gunshot wound to the chest. This morning, me and him was leaving together. He come back in together to go to the toilet. He said he late for work because he boss man called him. He got rich, he boss man. I said, all right, go, you got to push your body and go. He run out for go and catch the bus. Same for my coming out to go in the car. The man over there just said, your brother get shoot. So I run out. Only the only thing I had was my bag. When I go around there, my brother on the ground. All he said is he can't make it. The shooting in the rabbi. The techie chain. Apparently, they didn't want the phone because the lady, somebody else was there. She said that how he hold on for his pocket because they didn't want the phone. Confused family members rushed the injured youth to the hospital where he died while doctors battled to save his life. The family was hoping for good news, but that hope was replaced with despair as his death was confirmed. Screams of anguish replaced the silence of the hospital's compound and the family's home as they gathered and were told of Joshua Denny's death. Between her tears and mournful groans, the young man's mother, Afaria Denny, said she should not be burying her son. And the grieving aunt who also broke down in tears said her nephew never gave anyone any trouble and believed in working hard for the things he wanted. She said he was 19 and a trained electrician with a job. Everything, everything. Joshua, I'm in mean, man, respectable, quiet. Anything you call Joshua, he did. Joshua, Joshua. I don't say he's, he's loved by him. I don't know how to protect the chain. I'm going to I'm shot in the foot. I'm going to have to shoot in the heart. The devastated family is hoping that persons who witnessed the crime could assist the police with the investigations. Police investigators are already following a number of leads tonight. The 19-year-old is being remembered as ambitious, hardworking, and a lover of sports and most of all family. He was preparing to start a family of his own, according to his sister, who explained that his girlfriend is currently pregnant with their first child. The teenager was also active in football and youth groups in the community and started his career in electrical installation after completing training programs through the Youth Challenge Guyana organization. Some of his shocked friends gathered at the family's North Ramvelt home today and they also broke down in tears while crying out for justice. More news coming up in a moment. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say. But now that it's here, it will change life forever. And it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. 
Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. Strap in. Do you know that it, it is a fact? The deal on wheels is bad. Deal on wheels for security. That's a fact for fun. Deal on wheels. Republic Bank. Deal on wheels is back. With same day approval, reduced equity, longer repayment terms, and more. Plus, three lucky winners would win $100,000 each. Get the ride for you at Republic Bank. GBTI, make your dreams of owning a home a reality. Buy or build your home with us. Let us help you to completely outfit your home and make it move in ready. Need to purchase land? We finance that too. Benefit from our 10% down payment and interest rates as low as 4.25%. Calculated on the reducing balance with up to 30 years to repay. Switch your mortgage to us and learn about benefiting from the equity in your home. Invest wisely. Apply online or call your branch to schedule an appointment. GBTI. We see Guyana through your eyes. The Ministry of Health's vaccination drive will get a boost next week when 100,000 doses of the U.S.-made Pfizer vaccine are delivered as part of the COVAX initiative. Guyana received over 140,000 doses of the vaccine from the U.S. government last month, and it's currently being used to vaccinate children between the ages of 12 and 17 years old. The vaccines that will arrive next week will be added to the other vaccines currently being used to vaccinate adults. According to the Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, the government's plan is to still get more persons vaccinated so that the country could reach herd immunity and be more protected against COVID-19. And we have 192,672 persons who would have received a second dose vaccine. So... We now move up to 37.6% of our adult population receiving both doses of the vaccine. And overall, we have given uh, 24,194 doses of the Pfizer vaccine to children. That takes us up to 33.2% of that age cohort. The health ministry is closely monitoring the rise in cases in a number of hotspot areas, especially in regions 3 and 4. Meanwhile, the number of new cases of the virus continues to climb. Another 189 new cases were recorded yesterday, with three additional deaths recorded overnight. All three persons were unvaccinated, according to the Ministry of Health. The University of Guyana today announced that as it reopens for its new academic year on the 25th of October, 65% of the university's classes will remain online for the first semester from October to January of next year due to the prevailing COVID-19 conditions and ongoing building works. In a statement today, the university explained that the remaining 35% of classes, mostly consisting of laboratory and field exercises, are expected to be blended and face-to-face -face delivered at the various campuses for specific courses or parts of courses only in this first semester, October 2021 to January 2022. 
students will be notified directly of the schedule as well as safety measures they are expected to comply with if any of their courses are to be held face to face. The schedules will be posted on faculty websites, the university said. The University of Ghana will host orientation sessions online for both new and continuing students. Let's tell you now that some grade A schools which are managed by boards of governors are pushing back against a plan by the Ministry of Education to create additional spaces and places for students in the schools. The Minister of Education is set to meet with the school boards to address some of their concerns. On Wednesday, the Ministry of Education announced that it is currently working on creating additional spaces at the schools to accommodate more students as the National Grade 6 assessment results are to be released soon. The Education Minister Priya Manik Chan has been explaining that the initiative will be done in all secondary schools to give more students the opportunity to attend the higher grade secondary school than they might have attended under the previous system. According to the Ministry of Education, the decision was taken after a number of parent teachers associations and school board members raised the issue. But not all schools are on board the move, especially some of the top schools in the country. Some schools have complained that it is already difficult to manage the number of students in the schools already, and creating bigger classes and more places for additional students may not be the answer. Some board members believe the matter needs to be carefully examined and the schools and staff members must be properly consulted. Let's tell you now that the Ghana Elections Commission is set to roll out public advertisements for seven top positions from tomorrow. GCOM is seeking applicants for the positions of Chief Elections Officer, Deputy Chief Elections Officer, Assistant Chief Elections Officer, Chief Accountant, Legal Officer, Logistics Manager and Civic and Voter Education Manager. The Commission, at its last statutory meeting this week, agreed for the ads to be published to set the pace for the hiring of the senior officers. In a statement today, the Elections Commission said the advertisements will be carried in the print media, radio and television and online for two weeks. Details about the various positions will be published on the Commission's website, the statement indicated. According to the Public Relations Officer at GCOM, the Commission is adamant that the hiring process will be transparent and the process could be completed effectively within the shortest time possible so that the work program of the agency could proceed. In August, the Elections Commission terminated the contracts of the Chief Elections Officer, his deputy, and the Region 4 returning officer. The move followed a motion that was laid before the Commission by the government-nominated members of the Elections Commission. Since the dismissals, GCOM has found itself facing some difficulty with its management since there was no CEO in place. The absence of the CEO has also led to the suspension of the production of national ID cards. Some commissioners have expressed worry that the work of the commission could come to a complete standstill if the vacancies are not filled soon. Quick action by the Ghana Fire Service last evening contained a fire to one building, but several persons have still been left homeless. The fire service was summoned to the house at Russell and Broad Streets in Charlestown just after 6 p.m. on Wednesday. The firemen went into action immediately and kept the fire to one building. They were able to also douse it completely within a short time. It is suspected that the fire might have been triggered by an electrical problem with an air conditioning unit in the house. No one was at home at the time of the blaze, but one of the occupants, Swinburne News, said he lost everything and he's hoping for some help. And as crazy last the concert too is three million or whatever. I had some barring medicine, she coming home next month. And them thing. Like last week. Three three barry with stacks plus yeah, I had some and all. thing plus I got about like six TV, big TV. And them thing. Washing machine, fridge, everything. Clothes and boots and them things, don't talk about it. I can't tell you whether I last. I know she's a damage, I can't tell you all that at all. How long have you been living here? Huh? How long have you been living here? 16 to 17 years. This will make 17 years. Okay. How old is your son? My son is seven. The elderly man also said he lived in the house with a young son and they now have to get back on their feet. Meanwhile, the divisional fire officer praised the work of the firemen who responded and also persons in the area. Um, I feel very proud as a department to render this kind of assistance to the public. This is our job. We are eager to do it and we are doing it to the best of our ability. I just want to encourage the public. This period is a dry season period. 
you have all different type of activity taking place. You have fire starting as a result of spontaneous ignition because of the dry season. So we want to encourage the public to be more careful, be more cognizant of your actions. And also, whatever you're doing, just ensure that you're co conscious of what you're doing. If you are cooking, please turn off the stove when you're finished. If you're using electrical appliances, please plug them out when you exit the building so you can leave some level of safety. Of course, GPL would have supported us. All the power was taken off from the building and we deemed the area safe as, at this point in time. The fire service is reminding persons to unplug electrical appliances once they leave their homes. A boat accident in the Essequibo River at Quarry Rock Falls has claimed the lives of two men. The body of one man has been recovered so far. The body of Rupanuni businessman, 53-year-old the Mindra Dean, was discovered during searches in the area this afternoon, while the body of 68-year-old fisherman Roach Leo remains missing. Details of the accident are unknown, but it is suspected that the two men may have been heading to a mining area when they encountered some difficulties while traversing the rough waters. Search teams have been dispatched to the area along with additional investigators. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. We've got exciting news. All 12 ounce yellow cap Buster are now only $100. Buster, live in Come get your Buster, Buster $100. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say. But now that it's here, it will change life forever. And it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 Gasoline. Across the region tonight, teachers in Trinidad and Tobago shut down their laptops, tablets and cell phones which they use to conduct online classes as they held a day of rest and reflection. The Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association declared today and the 5th of October as two full blackout days and they advise parents and students that no online classes will be conducted in those days nor will class material be posted for students to complete. The association president has declared that if teachers decided to rest then there is nothing that anyone can say. In a social media communication disseminated to teachers and members following an emergency meeting of the association, it discussed protests to be taken in response to several issues.
Chief among those issues was the alleged disrespect by the Ministry of Education after officials refused to discuss with the association the way forward in the reopening of schools. But not all teachers may be participating in staying offline. One school said it was unaware of the call to protest. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley announced the resumption of physical classes for only vaccinated students in Forms 4 to 6 from the 4th of October. Unvaccinated students are to remain at home with their classes continuing virtually. The Chief Medical Officer in Barbados, Dr. Kenneth George, and Isolation Facilities Manager, Dr. Corey Ford, said healthcare workers on the front line of the battle against COVID-19 in Barbados were beginning to feel the physical and mental strain. George and Ford shared their concerns about the toll the surge of cases in Barbados over the past month was having on healthcare workers during an update about the current COVID-19 situation in the island. Dr. Ford said healthcare workers, including himself, have endured long hours, sleepless nights, and neglect of their personal affairs to be able to remain in place and manage the fight for lives in the island's isolation facilities. He said they are going to do everything that they possibly can to ensure that the persons hospitalized are stable. But if they do not get their meals on time at the isolation facilities, they should not get angry. Things are not normal, the doctor said. Barbados has seen an increase in COVID-19 cases and deaths over the past few weeks. And finally tonight, international news. The BBC reports that desperate families have been gathering at the jail in Ecuador, which police are trying to bring under control after fighting there left at least 116 inmates dead. The battle first broke out on Tuesday with prisoners using explosives and firearms on each other. Families are seeking news on loved ones, but with some victims decapitated or dismembered, identifying the bodies could take days. On Wednesday, officials said the jail was back under control, but by this morning, neighbors said they had heard explosions and more gunshots. Shortly afterwards, police said it was sending 400 additional officers back in to maintain order at the jail. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.